Yeah, hi friends. My name is Chandan and welcome back to my channel, Energy and Environment Education. Uh, friends, this is chapter 2.1, that is fuel and combustion of book two, that is uh, energy efficiency in, in thermal utilities. So all those aspirants who are looking forward to take exam this year or in the coming years for you know energy audit exam or energy measure exam, for them this is a very important chapter. A lot of questions can come from this particular chapter, and also important you know to have some you know key points that you should remember for the exams and concern. Those things I am going to explain you in detail here. So please uh, watch the video to the end because these points can help you out in preparation of your examination, friends. So let's start the video and hopefully this video will help you somehow in cracking the exam this year or in coming years, friends. So to start with, uh, uh, let's see the content first, friends. Uh, in the first part, I'm going to give the introduction to fuels. Second part is the properties of liquid fuels. I'm going to explain you. And the third part will be of storage of fuel oil. So all these three important parts I'm going to explain you in this particular video. So let's start with the first part, that is introduction to fuels first, friends. So as far as the type of fuels concerned, friends, there are three types of fuels: that is solid fuels, liquid fuels, and the gaseous fuels. And this is the important, you know, point that has to be noted here because in the entire chapter, the three fuels are discussed in detail: solid fuels, liquid fuels, and gaseous fuels. Their properties are discussed in detail in the entire chapter, friends. So that's that's why I'm saying the entire chapter is very important for your answer, friends. Second point is the fuel selection. Now, how you need to select the fuel for that? The availability of the fuel is also important concern. Uh, also storage. So we'll see in detail how you need to store the fuel. Handling of the fuel is very important to understand, friends. Pollution is another factor which really, you know, lets you understand why the selection of fuel is very important, and the landed cost of fuel, that is fuel cost. So basically, when you're going to select any fuel for your uses, you have to keep these things in mind. First thing is availability of the fuel, which type of fuel is available uh, for your, you know, uses. Second thing is storage of the fuel is also a concern. Third thing is handling of fuel. Fourth thing is the pollution. That the fuel creates. If it is low polluting fuel, then you can go for it. If it is high polluting fuel, then you should skip. And the last point is that the cost of fuel is also a concern. This, these are criteria which helps you, you know, to select the fuel. Basically, friends. Third thing is the knowledge of fuel properties. Also, property of the fuel is very important to understand. To, uh, this thing is very much explained in the entire, you know, chapter 2.1, friends. And the fuel property will help you out to select the fuel. And use the fuel accordingly, friends. So this is very important part which I wanted to explain you as an introduction to fuel. Friends. Now some of the key points which you should remember, friends. Uh, first thing is the ignition versus combustion. So you may be asked to explain in brief the two points that is the ignition and the combustion, and also different between the two. So you see the ignition is a slow process of burning fuel, whereas combustion is rapid and takes place almost instantaneously in four of the fuel. This is the basic difference between the ignition and the combustion, friends. Now the other term that is important is the calorific value. First of all, you should understand what is calorific value all about. Also, you may be asked to give an example or explain with an example the calorific value. So the calorific value is a measurement of heat or energy produced and is measured either as gross calorific value or net calorific value. Now the two terms that is gross calorific value and net calorific value also is very important for the, as far as the exam is concerned because they may, uh, they may ask you to, you know, define the two terms and also, also to explain the two terms. So you see the gross calorific value assumes all vapor produced during the combustion process is fully condensed and the net calorific value assumes the water leaves with the combustion products without fully being condensed. So this is the basic difference between the two or you can say the difference between being the latent heat of condensation of the water vapor produced during the combustion process is a major difference between the two GCV and the NCV friends. So this is very important for you to understand. Uh, they may ask you to define it or explain it with an exa example. And also you should remember that the fuel should be compared based on the net curve value, NCB, not on the base of GCB friends. So these are the key points that I wanted you to explain. And you should remember all these things as far as exam is concerned, friends. So this is the property of liquid fuel. So it's a very important part of chapter, and you should understand this thing thoroughly, friends. 
because a lot of questions can come uh, you can have in the exam friends so basically for the fill in the blanks type questions or short answer type questions it's a very important part of the chapter friends so you see the density is the first point that you should understand uh, you should understand the definition first it is defined as the ratio of mass of the fuel to the volume of the fuel it's the first part that you should remember second thing is at a reference temperature of 15 degrees centigrade this temperature you should remember that may come in the fill in the blanks type of question friends third thing is the instrument which is used to measure the density that is hydrometer if you understand this term also friends this may come in the exam as a fill in the blanks also the you know unit of density is kg per meter cube this is also you should remember friends so the four important points coming from density part first thing is the definition first second thing is temperature reference third thing is the instrument and fourth thing is a unit these four things you should remember as far as the density is concerned friends second comes the specific gravity again the definition is the ratio of the weight of a given volume of oil to the weight of the same volume of water at a given temperature this is the definition that you should remember friends second thing is unit the specific gravity is a ratio it has no unit you should understand that it has no unit sometimes they may ask you as a confusing question also to give the to state the unit of specific gravity so in that case you should understand that it has no unit and please do remember this thing because they may confuse you in the exam also friends and the measurement of specific gravity is generally made by a hydrometer so you can see here in the density case also it's measured by hydrometer also the specific gravity is measured by hydrometer so one more question comes here the difference between the density and specific gravity they may ask you this type of a question also to uh, define the two terms state their units also you can say the difference between the density and specific gravity friends now as far as the oil is concerned you see here the specific gravity for LDO light diesel oil you have 0.85 to 0.87 for furnace oil you have 0.89 to 0.95 and low sulfur heavy stock you have 0.88 to 0.98 you should understand this thing and you should also remember this you know the figures that is mentioned here they may come in the exam as a diet question or in diet question friends now another key point is the viscosity so they may ask you to define viscosity first of all or maybe ask you to explain in brief the term viscosity or they may club other terms also with viscosity friends like the specific gravity or density and the viscosity as a short answer type question or a part of long answer type question friends so the viscosity of fluid is a measure of internal resistance to flow this is a key point that is internal resistance to flow is what we call it viscosity friends and it also depends on the temperature temperature plays a key role in the viscosity if it is high temperature of the oil if you have more temperature viscosity will decrease decreases as the temperature increases and low temperature then the viscosity will increase this means resistance of the oil will more will be more when the temperature is less it will be more viscous so one more thing is important you to understand is the you know viscosity is measured in stokes and centri stokes sometimes viscosity is also quoted in ingler sebold or redwood this redwood is very important term because a lot of time questions have come as a fill in the blanks where you have asked to give the you know unit to measure so in that case redwood or centri stokes or stokes is also the key words that you should remember friends uh, they may ask you as a short answer type question or a fill in the blanks question friends now uh, the instrument that is used to measure the viscosity is the viscometer this is also key word that you should remember friends now coming to the flash point the flash point of a fuel is the lowest temperature at which the fuel can be heated so that the vapor gives off flashes momentarily with an open flame is passed over it flash point for furnace oil is 66 degree centigrade now you should understand this thing what is flash point and the pore point these two are the key important terms and they may ask you to define the two terms which is given here and also to explain the two terms in brief or maybe they may ask you to explain or you can say the difference between the flash point and the pore point now as far as the pore point is concerned the pore point of fuel is the lowest temperature at which the uh, it will pour or flow when cooled under prescribed condition so basically pore point is a temperature at which the fuel can be poured on any container friends and the flash point is the fuel at the uh, lowest temperature at which the fuel can be heated so that the vapor gives off flashes momentarily when open flame is passed over it so basically the temperature at which the Uh, you know fuel can be heated the lowest temperature is called the uh, flash point and the pore point is the temperature at which the fuel can be poured in a container so these are two differences between the flash point and the pore point you should understand the viscosity term 
flash point and the four point these are the key important terms that you should remember friends as far as exam is concerned they may ask you as a short answer type questions part of long answer type questions fill in the blanks also friends so these are very important part of the chapter friends now another key point that you should remember friends that is the specific heat so this may be also asked uh, you know along with the other terms or the point that i have listed out in the previous slides friends so specific heat is defined as the amount of kilo calorie needed to raise the temperature of 1 kg of oil by 1 degree centigrade so you should remember this thing this part is very important friends also the unit of specific heat is kilo calorie per kg degree centigrade this also comes as a fill in the blanks friends and is varies from 0.22 to 0.28 depending on the oil specific heat gravity so one more important term here is that light oils ha have a low specific heat whereas heavier oils have a higher specific heat this is also a key point that you should remember friends so this is all about a specific heat this may be also asked along with other you know uh, terms or the points that i have listed in the previous slides friends as in the exam it's very important as a short answer type question or part of long answer type question also for the fill of the blank type question friends and now as far as the calorific value is concerned already have discussed this thing so i am skipping right now you have already have discussed about the gcb about the ncp in the previous slides please refer the previous slides for the calorific value in the meantime in the exam they will ask you on the calorific value basically to define the calorific value or the explain the calorific value and also the difference between the gcb and the ncp or also to fully explain with example the gcb and the ncp friends so these things are very important for you to understand as far as exam is concerned friends now here is the gcb value of different fuel oils uh, that you should understand or uh, also remember it friends like for kerosene oil it is 11100 for diesel oil for uh, you have 10800 for ldo you have 10700 of fo furnace oil it is 10500 ls such as you have 10600 so these are the different uh, gcb values for different oils uh, fuel oils friends just that you should remember friends for the sulfur uh, as far as sulfur is concerned the amount of sulfur in the fuel oil uh, depends mainly on the source of the crude oil and to a lesser extent to the on the refining process, process. this means uh, they may ask you the uh, on which factor the you know sulfur amount of sulfur in the fuel oil depends upon so basically it is the source of the crude oil from where it is extracted not depending on the you know refining process so sulfur content will vary as far as the source of the crude oil concerned friend this is very important term that you should understand and remember friend as far as exam is concerned the normal sulfur content for essential fuel oil furnace oil is in order of 2 to 4% that is for fo it is around 2 to 4% friends now you see here the percentage of sulfur for different oils is given here So, like for kerosene oil, it is 0.05 to 0.02, and for furnace oil, you can see a 2 to 4 percent has already stated here. So, you can see here for furnace oil, you have the maximum, you know, sulfur content here, and if you see the kerosene oil here, you have around 0.05 to 0.02 percent, you know, sulfur friend. So, this is very key point that is very important for you to understand and remember, friends. So, also they may ask you which uh, oil has the maximum sulfur content. In that case, you must understand and remember that the furnace oil is having the maximum sulfur content friends now another key point is the ash content friends it's very important because the selection of fuel very much depends on the ash content it has and you see the typically the ash value is in the range of 0.03 to 0.07% and you see one more important point that you should understand here excessive ash in liquid fuels can cause fouling deposits in the combustion equipment so you may be asked in the exam what is the impact of high amount of ash content in the fuel oil so this is very important relevant point friends and you should understand it also and remember it that is excessive ash in liquid fuels can cause the falling deposits in the combustion equipment so it can damage the combustion equipment friends ash has erosive effect on the burner tips causes damage to the refractories at high temperatures and give rise to high temperature corrosion and falling of the equipment it's a very important point because they may ask you to explain the entire ash content phenomena and also what impact it leaves on the equipment and also on the you know fuel friends this is a very important thing that you should understand as far as carbon residue is concerned carbon residue indicates the tendency of oil to deposit a carbonaceous solid residue on a hot surface such as a burner or ignition so this is also important point that is essential oil contains carbon residue ranging from 1% or more so less the carbon content is there it will be better for the fuel friends this is a very important point you should understand water content of furnace oil when supply is normally very low as a product at refinery site is handled hot and maximum limit of 
one percent is specified as in the standard. So you should have the less water content also in the oil. So as far as the furnace oil is concerned, so maximum of one percent can be permissible as per the standard. Not more than that is permissible, friends. So that is the important of the water content in the fuel. So you see the ash content, the carbon factor, and the water factor is very important for it to understand as far as exam is concerned and also as a fuel is concerned, friends. So this table is very important for you to understand the typical specification of fuel oil. So you can see the properties are given listed out here for different type of fuel oils. Like see the density is given, flash point is given, core point is given, GCV is given. So you should not mug up the entire table, but also, but at least you should understand the entire table such that you get the insight of the difference between the three types of fuels that is given here. That is furnace oil, as such as at LDO. So if you see the density part, 0.89 to 0.95 is the category you know the i mean range for the furnace oil same way it is for 0 0.8 to 8 to 0 0.98 and 0 0.85 to 0 0.87 so not too much difference as far as density is concerned for the three type of oils is you know concerned friends but you see the flash point if you see here it is 66 here it is 93 and again 66 so furnace oil and ldo have the similar kind of flash point but for the lhs it is 93 here same way like for core point that is pouring of the fuel in the inner container furnace oil is having 20 and such as is 72 and LDO 18. So almost this and this is similar. So you see the furnace oil is having the more or less same uh, you know property uh, or range of property as far as the uh, uh, you know uh, compared to the LDO friends. But LSSS is having a bit of different you know, property range. Then again the GCP you see here almost similar you have then sediment percentage, sulfur total percentage, water content percentage is almost also similar for the furnace oil and LCS, but you see the water content percent is very much less here in LDO concern friends. Again, the ash content is 0 0.1, 0 0.1 and 0 0.02 is here. So for the LDO, you have the, the lowest content of the ash. So you should understand in this way, they may ask you to you know explain it, not exactly the figure you should understand, I mean remember, not mug up, but at least remember the range here, more or less, which is having the lowest content of as if you compare the three you know of fuel oils although you can be asked like which is having the lowest content of the water uh, so you may be asked to explain it or give it example friends so this way they can ask you for the lowest sulfur content which is having like up to 4 it is here for furnace oil for up to 0 0.5 it is for low sulfur heavy stock and up to 1.8 it is having ldo so you see here if they ask you to give example of the lowest sulfur content oil so in that case, low sulfur heavy stock is the correct answer, friends. So this way, they may ask you different type of question from this part of the chapter, friends. Now comes the storage of fuel oil. See here, the all uh, this is very important point that you should understand, friends. Loss of even one drop of oil every second can cost you over four thousand liters a year. So it's a very important point that is important to understand, to remember, and implement also, friends, in your personal life. So, sizing of storage tank facility is very important and recommended storage estimate is to provide for at least 10 days of normal consumption. This means storage of fuel oil is very important. One thing is the hazardous thing that has to be concerned, you know, while storing the fuel oil. Second thing is the backup. How much backup you should have at least for the storage. So, the tank that you are, whether you are uh, storing the oil should have backup of at least 10 days of normal consumption, friends. So, again, the second point is Industrial heating fuel storage tanks are generally vertical, mild steel tanks mounted above ground. It is important for safety and environmental reasons. So I said two things are important here. First thing is the capacity of the storage, how much days it can you know store the tank and store the fuel oil. That is important. Second thing is the hazardous part. That is how the oil is stored here, such that it doesn't create any environmental you know damage or any hazardous friends. Safety safety also is very important friends. So while storing the you know, uh, fuel oil, these two key points must be remembered, friends. Any leak, all leaks from joints, flanges, and pipelines must be attended at the earliest. So, you should first of all determine that there is no leakage there, and even if it is having some leakage, that should be addressed at the earliest, friends. And also, fuel oil should be free from the possible contaminants such as dirt, sludge, and water before it is fed to the combustion system. So these are the key points that you should understand and remember, friends, uh, when storing of the fuel oil. And it can come in the exam. Uh, as a you know to explain the entire phenomena of storage of fuel oil friends so it's a very important part of the chapter friends another key point is the removal of the contaminants 
so when you you know burn the oil before burning before combustion very important it is the point to understand and to remember friend that is any contaminant which is the oil is having will you know damage the equipment as a whole damage the burner as a whole so you should understand that the removal of all the contaminants is very much important in the oil friends furnace oil arrives at the factory site either in tank lorries by road or by rail oil is then decanted into main storage tank to prevent contaminants such as rags cotton waste loose nuts or bolts or screws entering the system damaging the pump pours a crystal of tin mesh size not more than 3 holes per inch is placed on the entry pipe so this is the you know different size of the mesh that is you know positioned there such that the different kinds of contaminants is filtered out that is very much important that i will try to show you in the next slide friends how the different size of the mesh is important to filter out the contaminants in the oil friends so you see here uh, you see the, between the rail tank lorry decanting point and the main storage tank when it enters the premises of the factory the size of the mesh is 10 and holes per linear inch is 3 here again between service tank and preheater the mesh size is 40 and the you know holes per linear inch will be 6 between preheater and burner mesh size will be 100 so holes per linear inch will be 10 10 means more you uh, you know get inside and close to the burner the more you know uh, mesh will be of higher size that will be a uh, hundred size and at the you know uh, entry point uh, of the factory the mesh size is 10 here so this is very key point that you should understand and remember whole size is very important and the mesh size is very important friends so as for the filtering out all the contaminants in the oil friends and now comes the pumping of the oil pumping of the oil is very much important heavy fuel oils are best pumped during positive displacement pumps this is a key point as they are able to get fuel moving when it is cold so you should understand this thing the which type of your pumps are used to pump the oils and viscosity is very important key factor here which plays a role here uh, because the more the viscous this means more heavy is the oil and in that case the pumping system has to be arranged accordingly friends so they have to have pumps have a shorter service life but are easier and less expensive to repair a centrifugal pump is not recommended because the oil viscosity increases efficiency of the pump drops sharply and the horsepower required increases this means you know if it is a heavy sized fuel a heavy fuel you can say the more viscous it is then you cannot go with the centrifugal pump so when higher pressures are required more viscous the fuel is in that case you should go for the piston or diaphragm type of pumps friends so in the exam also they may ask us a few blanks which type of pumps are required for the high viscous fuels for high where the high pressure is required to pump of the fuel in that case which type of you know pumps are required so diaphragm pumps and this type of exam in the exam also this type of questions have repeatedly come as a few blanks question friends so this is very important part that you should understand and also remember friends again this is very important point friends the fuel storage and pumping is temperature already i have explained you the full fuel storage phenomena in detail in the last slides friends also temperature is also a concern because it determines the viscosity the more it will be viscous you know it will be very much difficult to pump friends so in order to decrease the viscosity you have to increase the temperature so temperature also plays a key role here to you know fixing the viscosity of the oil you see here the viscosity of furnace oil and l such as increases with the decrease in temperature so if the temperature is low in that case the furnace oil or the adhesives will have high viscosity and if it is high viscous means it will be heavy to pump it will require more horsepower to pump the fuel oil friends similarly if the you know viscosity is less it can be made less by increase in temperature if the temperature is increased then the viscosity will be decreased and if the viscosity is decreased this means it will be very easy to pump out so this is very important phenomena how viscosity is related to fuel oil and how temperature is related to viscosity this means it is a vice versa i mean if the temperature is increased viscosity will decrease temperature is decreased viscosity will increase more viscous means high amount of you know uh, horsepower energy is required to pump out and if it is less viscous you can pump out easily friends these things are very key points that you should understand and remember friends temperature control is therefore very much important thermostats is the key word here which is used to you know control the temperature of the fuel oil like suppose if it is it is too viscous then you should have the temperature control in hand such that you can raise the temperature 
subside to lower the viscosity again if the viscosity will be too low i mean too too low in that case also it's very uh, you know important to control the temperature friends in that case you have to lower the temperature so controlling the temperature is very, very important to control the viscosity of the fuel oil friends so with this i am ending the chapter, uh, first part that is part a of this chapter 2.1 fuel and combustion friends of book 2 uh, of energy exam energy measure exam or energy alter exam friends and we'll continue with the part b in the next video that i am going to upload in few days friends so please uh, watch the other video also and hopefully this video has uh, given you some insight of the the different type of question that can come from this part of chapter friends and may help you to prepare your exam in a better way friends so please keep watching my other videos also and if you have missed other videos please uh, see the playlist you will have a lot of videos from different chapters that i have already uh, you know posted please go through the videos hopefully those videos will also help you out in understanding the chapters thoroughly friends and also the key points key areas which you should understand which you should remember for preparation of exam friends and this may be helpful for you to prepare your exam in this year or in coming years also friends and before i end uh, this is the youtube channel that i am having here energy and environment education so please uh, connect with me uh, you will have my mobile number here double eight double zero six seven one five zero nine any query if you have on this particular video or any other video if you want to ask me you can connect with me on this number this is also my whatsapp number friends also this is my email id channelsudeep07 at gmail.com you can write it down any query if you have on this particular chapter or any other chapter friends i will try to sort it out and respond to you as soon as possible also i have a whatsapp group link so you can also go through this link friends and you can join my whatsapp group where you can have other videos also in hand friends so apart from this one more request i am having as i did in other video also but i am not getting a fruitful uh, uh, you know support from your side that's what i'm trying to explain you please do subscribe my channel because this will motivate me to prepare more such videos in coming days and hopefully this video is also going to help you out somehow for preparation of your exam friends and also uh, please press the bell icon such that you get the notification as soon as i post a new video because i have been making a lot of videos earlier also and now also i will make and uh, you know uh, post several other videos on the exam content friends so keep watching the videos and please support me with this you know subscribing the channel it will not cost you a single rupee friends but will support me uh, to you know boost my confidence also and help me to prepare more such videos in coming days friends so that's so that's all for today and uh, i hope you enjoyed the entire video that i have posted today uh, on this part of chapter friends and keep watching the other videos also and please do subscribe my channel and press the bell icon also please any comment if you have in your mind please do, feel free to comment there and also you know uh, keep in touch with me friends so that's all for today uh, i hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching the video friends